Hello everyone, and now let's start with our lecture, uh, pre-malignant diseases. And in the first section of this pre-malignant diseases, we will talk about the vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. And in this lecture, you will learn a lot about uh, pre-malignant diseases, especially pre-malignant diseases of female reproductive tract. And these diseases are usually very um, uh, Usually patients who have these diseases, they usually go for the treatment very late in the, and they don't usually take it very light and they don't take it very serious. So after this lecture, now you will know what are the basic um, uh, features and how we can diagnose these early so we can prevent the further consequences that can lead to uh, serious um, uh, complications. So in this section, let's start with vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. And in this vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, we will talk about the uh, what's the different types and how we diagnose vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, what's the histology, and what's the Paget's disease. Histology is the ology is the study and histo is for the tissue. So we will study about what are the different tissue changes which can be, uh, which are present in the vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. So first, vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, besides going on that, we let's uh, review. We went over this a lot in our gynae lectures. But um, this, these are all the normal uh, structures or organs of the female reproductive system. So vagina, then the cervix, uterus, these are the fallopian tubes, these are the fimbriae of the fallopian tubes and these fimbrial ends of the fallopian tube, they hold the ovary and the um, uh, ovaries are present at the end of these fimbriated end of the fallopian tube. And there is bladder picture at the back. So this is the uterus and this is the bladder. So whenever there is any abnormality in the uterus, any masses, any growths, even pregnancy, there is pressure on the bladder because they are overlapping and that can lead to some bladder or urinary problems also. So vulval intraepithelial neoplasia is uh, divided roughly into uh, three uh, further groups. Vulval intraepithelial neoplasia type 1, then we have uh, type 2, and then type 3. All these are further classified depending on the severity of cellular changes. So in type 1, we have mild cellular atypia. Atypia or cellular atypia is uh, atypical type of cells are present which are not very well differentiated. That's one feature or that's the feature of the uh, any malignancy or neoplasia that cells start growing abnormally and the cells which are produced are not normal cells. They are not well differentiated cell. So it's they are atypical type of cells. And those cells usually don't have the normal characteristics of normal healthy cells. So that's the, those leads to the neoplasia. So type one, there is mild cellular atypia. It's not as serious as type two and three because slowly now the cells start getting more and more atypical. So type one, mild cellular atypia. Then in type two, now it's slowly progressing to severity or progressing in severity. So in this, we have moderate cellular atypia. So from mild, we now have moderate cellular atypia. 
Then in type 3, we have severe cellular atypia. So now the progression is from mild to moderate and severe. So that's why early diagnos diagnosis of these tumors or neoplasias is important. Patients should know what, what are the important features for the diagnosis because as the stage progresses from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, the prognosis is getting very poor. So early diagnosis, treatment options are better, treatment is better. As the disease progresses in severity, prognosis is getting poor and poor. So three types, type 1, type 2, type 3, VIN1, VIN2, VIN3, and mild, moderate, and severe atypia. Next, how we diagnose the intraepithelial neoplasia. The chief complaint, the patient usually comes and they complain of lump or bleeding. Chief complaints are the complaints with which the patient comes to see the doctor. So first thing they feel or they notice is there is lump or bleeding. On local examination, there is lesion which is white, gray, pink, or dull red in color. So there is lesion which is pink, gray, uh, dull red in color. Then acetic acid uh, uh, test turns the lesion white with punctuation and mosaic pattern. So on local examination, there is Usually lesion, which is color is from gray to pink or reddish, dull red in color. And when the acetic acid test is performed on that lesion, the lesion will turn white. That's the test done to find out intraepithelial neoplasia. And with the acetic acid testing, it will show mosaic pattern and punctuation. Mosaic is a pattern like which, which have small pieces attached together to give it a pattern like uh, combining of pieces of marble and um, uh, tiles, all that. So that glass and marble. So it, it is like a pattern. It's a pattern of, it's called mosaic pattern. Then on um, uh, if cytology is not very confirmative, then the confirmation is usually made by the biopsy, perform biopsy. Then cytological evaluation is performed to exclude vaginal or cervical neoplasia. So all these are the uh, steps that leads to the uh, diagnosis. First thing, patient comes with a lump or bleeding. Then on examination, there is a lesion which is pink or bright red or dull red in color. And then acetic acid testing cause uh, convert the lesion into white with mosaic pattern. And then also biopsy is performed and cytological testing is performed. Then histology, as I mentioned, histology is the study of tissue. So a microscopic examination of the lesion tell us what are the different changes that are occurring in the cells or tissues and at what stage the disease is present. Staging is also important. That's done by histology or microscopic examination. So in histology, what type of cells? Cells, they exhibit features of malignancy with loss of polarity and stratification. So on histological or microscopic examination, there is loss of polarity and stratification of the cells or tissues. So in this diagram, if you see, these are this loss of polarity, different atypical type of cells are present. There is loss of um, uh, differentiation, they are not well differentiated, and loss of stratification and polarity. 
This is the again the diagram that shows different uh, structures perineum uh, this is the anus then uh, uh, labocrural fold here this is labia minora labia majora then we have urethral meatus clitoris then all these are the nerves uh, obturator iliac, femoral, inguinal, these are all the uh, nerve supply of the perineum. So this is the diagram that shows how the cells will appear as they are uh, progressing to malignant changes with loss of stratification and polarity. Then the surgery is um, divided into uh, three uh, uh, parts. We have local excision, then laser therapy, and simple vulvectomy. Local excision is just the removal of the lesion, and that part is usually performed when the lesion is localized and there is no uh, chance that it is invaded already to the deeper structures or it spreads to the distant area. So local excision is just the removal of the specific area where the lesion is present. Then the other is laser therapy. Laser therapy is performed to destroy the tissue. And then simple vulvectomy. Vulvectomy is ectomy is the removal. Ectomy. So vulvectomy is the removal of the uh, vulva. This is usually performed. Simple vulvectomy means only vulva is removed. No other structure will be removed. And then simple vulvectomy is performed if the lesion is not uh, very localized and is spread to the surrounding or it is more invasive now. So this diagram shows like the area which is removed if it's the localized lesion and this is the area more extended area removed then again local excision is uh, usually done when there is just limited one centimeter margin in localized lesion so local excision is usually done for very small lesion or small uh, area then laser therapy, usually with the carbon dioxide, laser vaporization, cryosurgery, and loop electrosurgical excision procedure. In loop, uh, a small uh, uh, metal loop is inserted and the area is um, uh, 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 removed or it is tissue is destroyed by the laser by inserting the uh, wire loop. Then simple employed usually in the post-menopausal women uh, who uh, uh, usually they completed the family and they are post-menopausal, then the simple vulvectomy is the preferred method of treatment. Paget's disease. Paget's disease is a disease in which there is a presence of large round or oval paget cells present in the epidermis. You can see large round paget cells are present in the epidermic layer. And paget cells are the cells with, with the uh, uh, clear cytoplasm and then eccentric um, uh, nucleus present here, Paget cells. In this disease, Paget cells are present. Symptoms of Paget's disease or how the patient with Paget's disease will present is uh, pruritus and there is vulvar soreness, pain or bleeding. Uh, pruritus is itching, so there is bad itching and soreness along with pain and bleeding. Then also there, the uh, treatment is simple vulvectomy and biopsies are performed. So this was 
uh, all about the section 1 in which we talked about the vulval intraepithelial uh, neoplasia and also we talked about Paget's disease in which the Paget cells are present. Thank you for watching scardia.com.